Hey everyone and welcome. In today's video, I want to show you some intermediate to advanced features that you can do with NFTs on the Wax blockchain. Now, if this is your first time hearing about NFTs, I'll put a link so you can check out an introductory video so you kind of know what NFTs are, what they do. But if you've had experience with NFTs before, you know that they can be traded, they can be sold, they can be created, and they're a great way of kind of fusing those benefits of digital assets with the power of the blockchain. So in today's video, I want to show you a little bit more of the advanced features that you can do with them, how you can burn an NFT, why you would want to burn an NFT, NFT, how you can back an NFT with tokens, and again, why you would want to do that, as well as showing you how you can set up transfers and trades within the WAX blockchain using atomic assets. Hey everyone and welcome, this is the Part-Time Economist and in today's video I'm going to be doing a little bit more of an intermediate to advanced tutorial on the WAX blockchain, specifically dealing with these NFTs. So if you play Alien Worlds, if you play any of these games that are on the WAX blockchain, this is a tutorial that you're probably going to find useful, at least I hope. So. With that being said, I kind of want to give a general overview. And in the past, I've talked about how to create an NFT, how to list it for sale on the market. So I won't go over that again. The first thing that I really want to talk about is this concept of burning an NFT. Now, why would someone want to burn an NFT? So there's really two reasons that someone would want to burn an NFT. The first is to take it out of circulation. So when you burn an NFT, what you're essentially doing is you're sending that to an unrecoverable address. You're destroying that out of circulation. So let's suppose that I'm the creator of well, for example, I have created a few part-time economist NFTs that I give away to people for free just kind of as a thank you for watching my videos, right? So let's suppose that I've created a maximum of 50 of these, right? And let's suppose that instead of giving them away for free, I'm selling them, I want to increase the rarity. What I can do is I can burn these NFTs, taking them out of circulation, which makes the existing NFTs, the ones that are still there, it makes them more valuable because there are fewer of them. On top of that, you can burn an NFT from the perspective of an end user. So let's suppose that instead of being the creator of these NFTs, I am instead the person that holds an NFT. What you will find from time to time is that certain NFTs can be backed. Now when I say backed, that means that they have a certain amount of wax or other cryptocurrency attributed to them. So if I zoom in here, what you can see is that this standard shovel on Alien Worlds is 50 wax. Now that is the amount backing it. I don't have access to that wax until I burn the token. So I kind of have a trade-off. Do I want to use this NFT or do I want to burn it and get the wax? So I'll show you an example of how to recover this wax. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my standard shovel and we can see that this is mint number 66. 661217. So there's an infinite supply of this, and we can see how there's this minus 3127. That tells us how many of these standard shovels have been burned. So we can see that other people have burned these standard shovels before. If we want to burn this standard shovel and recover the wax, we can easily do that simply on Atomic Hub. And to do that, all we have to do is find it in our inventory, go down to more, and then we can see that we have the option to burn this token. It will say burning the NFT will destroy it permanently. This will unlock the back tokens within your NFT and the tokens will become transferable. So what I do want to show you right now, I'm sitting at a balance of 526 wax and I have my standard shovel. Once I go to more and click burn, I'm going to go ahead and confirm this and what you'll see it will bring up a transaction you will have to sign that with your wax cloud wallet the transaction has confirmed and then it will just be processing through the blockchain network the transaction successful and then if we go back we're going to go ahead and refresh our page and hopefully what you'll see if we did everything right yep this wax balance has increased by 50 just as we said and then if I would find another sh standard shovel somewhere else on the marketplace you would see that the total burn count of that item had increased by one and just to show you an example of that burn count increasing I'm going to do the exact same thing but this time I'm going to do it with an NFT that I've actually created that has never been burned before so you can see it being burned in real time so I'm going to burn one of these part-time economist jungle NFT cards and what you'll see is that it's never been burned before so when we pull up a similar asset you will be able to see that the burn amount has increased on that. And this is one thing that I'm not like super huge a fan of on the Wax blockchain is that you have to go through this I'm not a robot every single transaction, which I think if you do it once that should be good enough, but it really kind of slows things down and makes it a little bit more cumbersome we see is that that token has been burned and now obviously it's showing us it's not owned we can't really do anything with it and then one other thing that I do want to show you if we go back to a similar item 
we can see that just as I said, it has that minus one burn. So we can see that there's a total of 50. One of them has been burned. So this is a good thing because if I'm an artist, if I'm a creator and I'm saying, oh, I created 50 of these NFTs and I've burned half of them. You don't have to take me at my word for that. You can actually look, you can see that that decreased circulation, that mintage has dropped. You can kind of hold me accountable and say, yes, you actually have burned these. So these are especially important if you're in a project where you're trying to show something is rare, show that something is more valuable. You can actually prove that it has indeed been burned as well as having a limited mintage. So with that being said, I kind of want to jump and show you the flip side of that. So I show you how to burn a token and recover the underlying assets. Now I want to show you how to back a token as well as why you would want to back a token. So the first part of that is we're going to want to go to an item that we want to back. And the reason that people would want to do this is because let's suppose that I'm an artist and I'm creating some new NFTs. People don't really know them that well. They don't really they don't really know. So they don't want to buy something that's not going to be valuable. So what I can do is I can back my tokens and I can say okay this piece of artwork is going to be always worth at least 50 wax. So the price might go up, you might be able to sell it for 200 wax, but at a bare minimum, you're always going to be able to burn this piece of artwork for 50 wax. Or on the flip side, if I'm creating a blockchain based game and I say, hey, you need these NFTs to be able to use them in the game, but in the event the game doesn't work out, I want you to at least be able to get a little bit of your money back. So I'm going to back each of these standard shovels or standard drills with at least one wax token. So it kind of gives an assurance to the person that is purchasing those NFTs. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to one of these part time economist NFTs that I've created. And what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to back it with a token. And it's incredibly easy. I select what access I want to back. So I have WAX, I have PGL. I'm going to be backing this token with one WAX. Now remember, once we back this token, the only way to get that token back is to burn the asset. So we can't simply unback it and take it away. We have to get it back from burning that NFT. So we're going to go ahead and click confirm. That transaction has been completed and now obviously that token is going to be backed with one wax. And then what we see if we're scrolling through all of these similar assets on our page, we can see that that token has been backed whereas the others have not. So it gives us a way of identifying, kind of showing which tokens are backed, which ones aren't. Now I do want to show you one more feature which is very interesting which is the trade feature. So I do have the ability to transfer assets to a friend, I have the ability to give them to someone else to send them whatever the case may be and I can do this without having to go through the marketplace and selling so I have showed you in the past videos how to list an item for sale but in this one let's suppose I'm doing a giveaway I want to give it to a friend I can simply transfer this without having to go through the marketplace so I can go to transfer and then I can simply enter the recipient address and put in a memo so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my alternate wax account and that is going to be .cgb4.wam we can see that that transaction has been executed locally. It's waiting for confirmation. And then as soon as that goes through, we can refresh my alternate account. We'll go into inventory and we will see that listed. Now, one thing that I do want to point out a lot of times, if you get an NFT from someone that's not been a verified creator, they've not been whitelisted, you'll still get that NFT. The only issue is that you might have to go and check to look for unwhitelisted NFTs, but you will get that NFT. And I'll show you how to do that by going to your inventory and then what you want to do is you want to uncheck this box that says only whitelisted NFTs. You can see the NFTs that you have. Sometimes this the cool thing about WAX and, or, or NFTs in general is that you really have ownership of these cards. So you can sell them, you can give them away, but the cool thing that I also like is you can actually set up a trade. So this is great if, for example, I have one card that I want to trade for multiple cards of my friends. I don't want to go through the process of selling them, converting them to wax. I want to do a direct peer-to-peer -peer swap just with one other person. So the way that I'm going to do this is I want to go to the assets that I have and I want to set up a trade. So let's suppose that my friend has a very limited edition part-time economist NFT and I'm willing to give him two NFTs just to get that one. So what I would do, I would go to more and I want to set up a trade. So I'm going to go to new trade and it's going to bring up the first item. So obviously this is a part-time economist NFT. However, I can add more items to this as well. So this is kind of my first item that I'm going to be adding in. Let's suppose that I also want to throw in a part-time economist jungle NFT and I could add in whatever I wanted. I could add as many different assets as I wanted, but this just kind of shows you the process. So I'm going to be trading two of these assets for this limited edition NFT right here. So what I want to do is I want to go and I want to find the address that I'm going to be trading to. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and I'm going to paste this into the recipient name 
and it's going to show me what assets my recipient has. So this is the cool thing because if I'm trying to trade with my friend, I can see exactly what they have. So I can look, I can make an offer, and I'm going to go ahead and I want this NFT creation video. So this was kind of one of the first NFTs that I ever made and I want that back. So I'm willing to give up two NFTs just to give this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this trade offer. So this is one of the things that Wax is a great blockchain, but the one issue that I have specifically with using Atomic Hub is that because you have to verify you're a human so many times, it kind of gets itself caught up and what transactions have been processed and what hasn't like you're never going to lose an asset you're never going to lose crypto it's just you're going to have to go through some additional steps sometimes which can kind of slow you down it's like i said it's a great blockchain overall but it can get a little bit annoying if you're trying to do a whole lot of transfers so what we're going to do now is we're going back to my alternate account we'll refresh the page and then if we click at the top where it says trading what we'll see is we have an active received offer so this is our friend here which is me um, and we're offering to give this one original part-time economist NFT for two of these new ones. So we can send a counter offer, we can straight up decline the offer, or we can accept. What we're gonna do obviously is accept. We're gonna go ahead and confirm. We will approve that transaction. And then if we go back to our inventory and refresh the page, what we will see is that original NFT part-time economist limited edition has went back to my original account. And I now have these two jungle NFTs as well as the alien worlds NFT. So that's kind of a little bit of an overview, some of the more intermediate features of Wax blockchain, some of the NFT things you can do. And like I said, I've made videos before about simple buying, selling, creating NFTs. But one of the big things that I think is really important is this whole concept of backing NFTs with Wax or other tokens because it's really a great idea, especially if you're trying to convince people that your NFTs have value because they know there's always going to be a certain amount of minimum value, right? If I'm buying a piece of artwork, or let's suppose that I'm playing Alien Worlds, right? And I don't know, I'm like, I don't want to spend a lot of cryptocurrency on some digital artwork or an Alien Worlds mining tool. I want to have some assurance that if the game goes south, I'm at least going to be able to get a little bit of that back. So you don't have to back it 100%, but let's suppose that the sale price of an asset is 50 wax and I say hey I'm gonna back it with 10 wax that way you know if the game goes down if no one ends up liking it at least you're gonna be able to get a little bit of that back so the concept of backing and burning are kind of two sides of the same coin backing you're kind of putting value into an NFT and then with burning you're taking that NFT out of circulation you're getting that underlying collateral if you will obviously the trades the transfers something that I think is pretty cool because it's really showing you that these NFTs are just like trading cards they're just like real assets that you can trade with your friend in a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer manner so as always I hope you found something useful in the video thanks for watching and I'll see you next time